Hi everyone, I'm Mario and welcome to Code on Fire. In this new tutorial of the series dedicated to Python, we will explore the use of a for loop in Python. This time uh, we will use Visual Studio, which allows us uh, to develop uh, actual applications uh, since it is a full-fledged IDE. Click on New Project, search for uh, Python and select the Python application option. Click Next, give your project a name, check the place solution and project in the same directory option and click Create. A for loop in Python is a tool that uh, uh, allows you to iterate over a sequence. It can be used to execute a block of code a certain number of times or to iterate over each element of a sequence. To understand how the use of loops uh, can be uh, beneficial, we first need uh, to know about lists. In Python, a list is an ordered collection of elements that can be of any type – numbers, strings, objects, and so on. Lists are defined using square brackets and the elements are separated by commas. Let's declare a list called colors and insert some elements into it. Therefore, square brackets and insert the elements by simply writing a series of color names which will uh, be our elements, separated by a comma. Close everything with a semicolon. At this point, the elements occupy a precise position called an index. It is worth remembering that the indices always start at zero, so the color in the first position will have an index of zero. To confirm this, we will insert our list into the print function followed by square brackets, within which we will uh, spe specify the index of the element we want to access. Run the program. As we can see, this is the output we get, confirming uh, that lists are uh, an ordered set of elements. In Python, not only lists can contain a series of elements. There are different data structures, such uh, as uh, tuples, sets, uh, and dictionaries. Each uh, of these uh, has uh, specific properties, uh, but uh, we will uh, get to know all of these later. The reason I introduced the lists uh, is uh, precisely to see how the for loop works in Python. In fact, uh, the for loop requires uh, iterable objects uh, like a list uh, to function. Let's write a for loop that refers to the colors list. We start by writing the keyword for, followed by a variable that I will uh, arbitrarily call color. This variable is called the iteration variable and takes uh, on the value of each element of the iterable in each cycle. Therefore, in the first cycle, it will have the value equal to the element in position 0 of the list, in the second cycle, the value of the element in position 1, and so on. We continue by writing in colors. This part references the iterable, in our case, the list colors. We end with a column, move to a new line using this indentation, and use the print function to print all the elements of the list by referencing the iteration variable within the print function. If uh, this happens, it means the for loop is working correctly. Let's run it and test everything. As we can see, our for loop worked correctly. We have obtained a cycle for each index of the sequence. Let's add some comments. Basically, the working scheme is as follows. You take an iterable, each element of the iterable occupies a specific position as it has its own index. You use the keyword for to activate the loop. You assign a name to the iteration variable, which will take on the values of the elements contained in the iterable one at a time. You use the keyword uh, in to specify which iterable object should be considered or which interval uh, of uh, it, as we will see shortly. After the column, we can insert uh, all the statements and functions to finally obtain an output that meets our requests. 
Now let's see how we can print a list in reverse order. To do this we can use the reversed function. So we write the function and within the parentheses we give the name of the variable. Let's run it and as we can see uh, the order in which the elements are printed will be reversed. Another uh, certainly more interesting and useful way to achieve this is uh, by using the slicing technique. Slicing is a technique that allows you to extract a part of a sequence, such as a list, a string, and so on. Using slicing, you can access uh, subsequences to which we can give a step and an iteration direction. This is the syntax of slicing. Given a sequence, it is possible to extract uh, a subsequence, subsequence from it by specifying which uh, uh, should be the first index that we will insert in the start position, the last index that we will insert in the stop position, which will uh, be equal to stop minus 1 or stop plus 1 if the step is negative. And finally, the step that indicates the value by which the loop moves from one index to another and the direction of iteration. As we can see, all three are optional. If uh, nothing is uh, specified in the step, it defaults to one. If the step is negative, it will reverse the direction of iteration. Therefore, in the start we will insert the highest index value and in the stop the lowest index value. Let's use this technique on our for loop. What we want to do is reverse the direction of iteration, so we write square brackets colon colon minus one. Without specifying the start and stop, in this case all indices will be taken. Let's run it and as we can see the list will be printed starting from the last index to the first. Let's see another sample. Uh, this time we insert the value of 1 in the start, 4 in the stop, which corresponds to the third index, stop minus 1, and 2 in the step. Therefore, we will start from index 1 in the first cycle and increasing the index value by 2, we will reach the index 3 in the second cycle. Let's run it and as we can see we get um, the expected result. We will return to the slicing technique useful in many situations. Similar to the slicing technique is the range function. This function is used to identify an interval uh, within a sequence uh, determine the step and the direction of iteration. Therefore, we will similarly provide uh, the values for start, stop and step. To understand how it works, let's look at some examples. After in, add the range function and write the number 3 inside the parentheses. If you insert uh, as a single value, it will be taken as the stop value. In this way, the iteration will start from index 0 to index 2. So it will take the first three elements because, in this case 2, the value of the last index is stop minus 1. As we can see, there is no reference to the list which uh, this time uh, we will call within the print function and within the square brackets we will refer uh, to the iteration variable. Let's run it and uh, we will have ex exactly the values from index 0 to index 2. If we want to identify an interval uh, we give the value 1 to the start, then 4 to the stop, and uh, eventually uh, to the step, uh, which uh, in this case, uh, if uh, not specified, is still equal to 1. Let's run it and we get exactly what we expected. The values from the first to the third 
index. Like the slicing technique, in the range function, if we give a, a negative value to the step, we must first insert the higher index value in the start and then the lower value in the stop. For example, we insert a value of 3 in the start, a value of 1 in the stop and a value of minus 1 in the step. In this case, the stop value will be stop plus 1. We should then get two cycles. Let's run it and that's exactly what we get. Always remember that a list can contain any type of data. For clarity, I'll show you an example where I declare a list that uh, he'll generically call sequence and inside it I insert different types of data strings, integer, decimal and so on. We call the iteration variable element and reference the list in this part. In the print function we uh, reference the iteration variable and run it. As you can see everything works correctly. It is also important to remember that a string it is an iterable object. Let's declare the variable name uh, to which we assign a value Bob, change the name of the iteration variable to letter, write the variable name after in and pass the iteration variable in the print function. Let's run it. As we can see, the string is iterated, returning one letter for, uh, per cycle. That's all for now. This is just the beginning. Don't miss the second part dedicated to the for loop and I recommend watching the other tutorials in the, this uh, Python series. You can find the links in the description. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel.